Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. is risen, trumpets resounding in glorious light, splendor the Lamb, heaven forever, oh what a miracle God has in sight, Jesus is risen and we shall arise, give God the glory, hallelujah. Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome to worship with Peace Lutheran Church out of Austin, Texas for this third Sunday of the season of Easter. Today we'll be using music out of setting four in the Evangelical Lutheran worship and singing hymns number 495, We Who Once Were Dead, and 366. The strife is o'er, the battle done. There's a bulletin at peaceaustin.org that includes all of that if you don't have a hymnal. And if you don't have a bulletin and all you have is yourself, then you have enough. You have more than enough. I'm so glad that you're here and that we can connect today. Today is a full day. We offer blessings to the Crop Walk team and great gratitude to everyone who supported that project this year. As this service of the word concludes, we will transition to communion, which will begin a little bit earlier than usual. Usually we start at 1115. Today we're going to start fairly promptly after this service ends. So by 1105, um, we will begin 
so that we can then transition to the congregational meeting at 1115. That will be the same Zoom connection for both. So if you're um, coming to one or coming to the other, you can uh, connect right away for communion at 1115 for the meeting um, or join at 11 and stay on for both. Our call-in number, our meeting ID is a little different. So if you're connecting by phone, you can still call 346-248-7799. But the meeting ID today is 874-5275-2492. There'll be a link on Facebook and there's also a link to connect in the weekly email. So you should be able to find us no matter how you're connecting. I want to say a very brief word about future gatherings um, as we are still kind of stuck in the middle of stage three precautions with Austin Public Health, but also um, feeling that yearning to be connected to one another. We do know that outdoor distanced gatherings are quite safe. And so that is one way that we are carving out space to make connections in this time. I have pastor on the patio going on once a week at church. But I'm also happy to be a pastor on your porch or in your driveway if you aren't able to make it at the scheduled times at church, which are different each week. This coming week, it will be from 11.30 to 1.30 at church on Monday. Um, but I'm also happy to come visit you wherever you are. So please let me know. My folding chair is in my car and I would love to come have a safe, socially distanced chat with you if you're here in the Austin area. We also are going to begin a time we can worship and pray together, again, outdoors and distanced um, on Sunday evenings. The first service will be Sunday, May 2nd. You can look for more details about that. We look forward to being able to also pray in person in closer physical space while still minding the guidance from public health experts. And you'll also probably notice sometime relatively soon some experiments from the sanctuary with our new streaming equipment. And that'll happen not on Sunday morning right away while we get the hang of things, but eventually will be a way we can connect on Sunday mornings and in perpetuity. So those are some things about what's going on in the life of peace today and in the future. And right now we give thanks that we are together here and we continue our worship with the hymn of praise. Let us pray. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life 
that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ, our savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from Acts. Peter addressed the people, you Israelites, why do you wonder at this, or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that this Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I was in distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you love illusions and seek after lies? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. The Lord will hear me when I call. Tremble then and do not sin. Speak to your heart in silence upon your bed. Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. Many are saying, who will show us any good? Let the light of your face shine upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart, more than when grain and wine abound. In peace I will lie down and sleep, for you alone, O Lord, make me rest secure. The second reading is from First John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called the children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord. The children are invited to participate in the children's sermon. Good morning. It's good to be with you today. Hope you're all doing okay. I've got a question. What do you know about ghosts? I can hear you. 
there's no such thing as ghosts. But whether you believe or not, when you hear the word ghost, what do you think of? Do you think of a, a white sheet with eyes in it? Do you think of sort of a, a person that sort of faded that you can sort of see through? You know, there's one thing about ghosts. You know, if you have a closed door, they can walk right through it. In today's gospel lesson, Jesus comes to visit his friends just a couple of days after he had risen from the dead. So this is just a little while after Easter. And his friends had heard that he was alive. Two of them had seen him. But the others weren't so sure. Well, Jesus shows up in the room with them. And you know what? They don't say, yay, Jesus is here. They are afraid. They're scared to death. And one of them says, is it a ghost? Well, Jesus says, look, touch my hands. Touch, touch my hands. The scar on my chest says, does the ghost have flesh and bones? Well, they were a little more comfortable maybe, but they were still afraid. And you know what? Even after touching, they didn't all believe. Jesus thought, now bring me something to eat. They brought him some boiled fish and he ate it. And everybody knows that ghosts don't eat. They don't need to eat. So the, the, the friends, the disciples, they started feeling more comfortable. And Jesus started to tell them the story about why all these things had happened, why he had to be put to death and resurrected for the, and it was for the forgiveness of our sins. But he told them the story that he had told them before and they didn't understand. So he says he opened their minds. What he did was gave them the ability to understand. And what he said next is very important. He said, we need to take this story to the whole world. Now, even at that time, the whole world was a whole lot of people. And the disciples, the friends, they looked around the room, you know, how are we going to do this? And Jesus told me, you're going to start right here in Jerusalem. Okay. They had to still have the question, how do we get to the whole world? So, some of them could preach to large groups, and that worked. But still, that was just a little bit of the world. What, we, what they found out was, okay, if one of them, let's say this domino is one of them, tells another one, well, he can tell another one, and pretty soon, everybody will have heard the word. Now, it's such a huge job that it's still going on. And you and me are part of it. We're one of the dominoes. We need to tell others about Jesus and forgiveness and his love, the whole story. Can you pray with me? Dear God, please remind us that we are part of the job of getting the story of Jesus to everyone else. And please be with us as we continue to take this story to all those who have not heard it. 
In your son's name we pray. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? Why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. It was three o'clock in the afternoon. Good time to hang out on the temple steps and beg for coins from those who are going up to prayers. You know those ah. religious folks, they're always good for a little bit of something. Ah. Three o'clock, as usual, there by the beautiful gate. Peter and John go up the stairs, stop and notice this man and tell him to look at them. The writer says they fixed their eyes on one another. I see you right here. It starts to become unusual and the regular thing of the day changes. I don't have gold or silver to give you, says Peter, but with those fixed ah. eyes that could ah. not be ignored, he continues and says, I give you what ah. I do have. In the ah. name of Jesus, get up and walk. Nothing ah. was usual at three o'clock in the afternoon on the temple steps. The lame man who'd been carried there by his friend stood. He walked on stairs, no less. He danced, he shouted praises to God, and he clung to Peter and John. And all those pious praying people going up the steps stopped and wondered and stared at Peter and John and the formerly men and gathered around as if to say, what's going on here? For this amazing new fledgling church, the people of the way, the ones who believe in the risen Christ, this afternoon at three o'clock became an occasion for proclamation for storytelling, for connecting this incident to God's great actions of promise and liberation. And so Peter alludes to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, key words that lead to remembrance of whole cycles of divine action in the life of the chosen people. And at three o'clock in the afternoon, Peter's proclamation linked those ancestors and God's promises to Jesus. God's own son and all of the divine power that was given to Jesus by God. And so a new and powerful story of all that divine power given to Jesus, power that Jesus by his death and resurrection had given to believers becomes real here on the steps of the beautiful gate 
living into the promise of God's presence and faithfulness, acting to liberate a child of God for new life and possibilities. Three o'clock in the afternoon, not only a time for storytelling, but a time for truth telling. You, said Peter, gave him over to the authorities to be killed, but God raised him from the dead. You can stare and wonder. You can gather around and murmur and judge. Or you can repent of the way you allowed yourselves to be manipulated. You can repent of the violence and destruction that you caused. You were ignorant, Peter says. I'll give you that. But now you know. Repent. Change your ways and your attitudes. Move down the stairs and out of the beautiful gate that had led you to prayer and worship upstairs. Move down the stairs and out of the beautiful gate into an, a magnificent entryway for neighborly service and care for all, taking the power of God to those who need it most. It's three o'clock in the afternoon, and this man's perfect health is God's gift before your eyes. He's free of the physical bonds that kept him from fully living into the promises of God. And our text leaves it there. Peter has more to say, but this is what we get for today. And so here we are. It's three o'clock in the afternoon somewhere, and we are called as church to stare into the eyes of all who are hurting and bless them with the power of God. We are called to tell the truth to those whose actions cause hurt and pain and bless them with the promise of forgiveness. The power of God is given to the church, to us, to me, to you, to call the world to account, to call out sin and destructive behavior, to name the systems that perpetuate discrimination and inequality, to recognize our own selves as participants in the oppression of others, to unveil fear. And the power of God is also given to us, to the church, to you and to me, to forgive sin and to heal, to tell the truth of God's unconditional love for all, to bind the wounds of those who are hurt and maimed by hatred, to strengthen crooked limbs that cannot carry the weight of life, to dance, to walk, to run, to play, to sing praise and to cling to one another in new community. It's three o'clock in the afternoon, everywhere. The resurrection makes it all new. Time stands still in the power of God. It is not things as usual, and it's not too late. It's not too early, it's just on time. Thanks be to God who raised Jesus from the dead. It's three o'clock in the afternoon, amen. Jesus.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We thank you. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes among us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, rains to our thirsting earth like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. We bless you. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us as companions on our journeys as we share your life. Send us, O oh God. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts. Shower us with life. Make us one in you. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God now and forever. Amen. With the whole church, we proclaim our resurrection faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, found on page 12. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Living God, in the midst of Easter joy, we are still filled with questions and wondering. Open our hearts and minds as we encounter the scriptures, so that the church embodies repentance and forgiveness in the name of Jesus to all nations. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Creating God. Like a master artist, you have fashioned the universe out of your love and delight. Heal your creation where it is in need of restoration. Provide all the inhabitants of earth a peaceful and sustainable home. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of all, the nations hunger and thirst for your righteousness. 
Many call on you for guidance and strength. Answer their hopes with the peace of Christ and give your loving kindness to national, state, and local leaders of people. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Healing God, you hear the cries of those in need and answer them in their distress. Grant to those who are sick and suffering your compassion and nurse them back to health and wholeness. We pray especially for those that we name either aloud or silently. Be close to the hearts of the lonely. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Loving parent, you have given us such love that we should be called the children of God. Reveal yourself to us so that in this community of faith we'll become more and more like you in our mutual love and bold witness. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of all times and ages, those who have died in you now see you as you are. We thank you for their lives among us. We remember especially June and Charles. Assure us of the peace that you have promised, that we may join them in everlasting life. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This time, having heard God's word and reflected on our call, having sung God, God's praise, we prepare to turn, to go out into the world, to live as the people God has made us to be. And so in this time, we reflect on all those things given into our care by God for the sake of the world, time, talent, and treasure. As we hear this music offered up to the glory of God, we reflect on how what we have may be, uh, may be offered up to God's glory as well. Thank you. 
the price Willing to pay the price How beautiful Let us pray. God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world. For the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Today, as we prepare to receive God's blessing and continue on, whether that is to God's table, to congregational business, to the crop walk or to the work of our lives, we do have a particular blessing for those doing particular ministry in this moment, for those who have been part of the crop walk team, as well as those who have supported them. And so I invite you to a moment of blessing for these people in their good and faithful ministry. Friends in Christ, today we give thanks to God and ask for God's blessing on this year's Crop Walk team. We rejoice at the fruit of their labor to gather offerings, to end hunger and water insecurity in our community and throughout the world. And we rejoice at the generosity of all those who have offered gifts of their resources and the support of their prayers. We reflect on these words from scripture. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. Matthew 25, 35. And how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace, who brings good news, who announces salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Isaiah 52, verse 7. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe. You made the whole earth for your glory. All creation praises you. We lift our voices to join the songs of heaven and earth in thanksgiving for the many blessings you have given us. Renew in all of us the commitment to use our gifts in the service of others and especially of those in need. Let us be your hands and feet to feed the hungry and give water to the thirsty, to shelter the homeless, clothe the naked, 
Comfort the weary and outcast, welcome the stranger, care for creation, and be loving neighbors to all people. Bless the feet of Laura and Linda, of Roger, Judy, of Becky, Mary Ellen, Paul, Irene, and Bill, with these people whose work proclaims peace and good news and hope for the hungry and thirsty. Bless the feet of those who walk far distances to access the most basic resources for life. May all their feet lead all of us in the path our Savior walks, drawing us closer to one another and to God in love. To you, O God, be glory and honor through your Son, Jesus Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, in your church and in the world, now and forever. Amen. And now may we all receive these words of blessing, which I'm going to pause before I give to remind those who might want to connect. If you are connecting live on Sunday morning to communion at 11 or the congregational meeting at 11.15, a slightly different schedule than usual, that you can connect through the Zoom link that is in the email, that is in the comments on Facebook, if that's where you're connecting now, or you can call in by phone, and that number is 346-248-7799, and the meeting ID is 874-5275. Two four nine two. Receive this blessing. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus, the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen.
The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. And also with you. And also with you.